Hi, um, welcome viewers and subscribers um, to Soulprint Intuitive Tarot. I am delighted that you are here. It has been a very um, exciting few days for me as I've been going through your comments and looking at the increase in subscribers and likes and it, it's just really been wonderful. So thank you. Um, just I just wanna make a, a quick little point. So the way I read or the way I, I receive information is it's the only thing I can liken it to is sort of um, the way a translator must feel. So they're getting information from one place and it's coming out of their mouth in a different format. Okay, so they're here in English and they're repeating it in French. Um, in, in my case, it's very similar. I I'm constantly receiving sort of information and insight and um, understanding. And what I'm doing is I'm literally receiving it and repeating it almost simultaneously. So my viewers have been very, very good at pointing out when I say, you know, Elizabeth instead of Elaine, or, you know, I, I mix up a number. Um, and I apologize, and I appreciate that that's probably kind of irritating for you. But for me, it is, it is like I am translating information so quickly that is sometimes why names or words just escape me because I'm, you know. Um, so I, I do thank you for the um, insight and the corrections. I just want you to know that for the most part, I'm actually probably pretty aware of them. But if I've done, um, you know, a 15 minute video and I, I say a name wrong, I'm not probably going to stop and redo the video because you can never duplicate a reading. It, you just can't. It, it, it's not doable. So um, just, just wanted to make that kind of known because um, different readers channel in very, very different ways. And for me, being so intuitive, um, it really is kind of like a constant stream that shoots out my mouth. And as I've said to a few viewers, it very often is like my brain and my mouth are not synced up. They just are, you know, each doing their own thing and we kind of hope for the best. Okay, so um, yesterday there was a... Um, news or the day before there was news and yesterday there was a fair number of readings um by some of the amazing amazing uh tarot readers out there about the the mercers um pulling back funds from um the trump campaign going forward so i have a question this is my question it's not hard to sort of understand maybe why the mercers did that i mean the investigations dragged out their whole connection to Cambridge Analytical. They were getting bad press. There, you know, things were being investigated around them or with them. What I want to know is how are Trump and the Republicans taking this sort of seismic rejection from, you know, one of their more significant donors? Um, it has to be a bit of a blow. So, while it's interesting to know why they did it, but I want to know how these people on the receiving end of this lack of funds are actually reacting to it. So, a couple more shuffles, and then we're going to um, focus in and, um, and see what um, Tarot on the Cards would like to tell us about... Mm, come on down. So... What are the cards wanting to tell us about Trump Republicans Mercer? Trump Republicans Mercers, Trump Republican Mercers. Oh my. Alrighty. Okay, well, they're not taking it well. Um, you know, Trump, this is the thing. Trump is so wrapped up in his own agendas that he doesn't really stop to think about, oh, okay, wait a minute. If I please this group, I might possibly antagonize or alienate 
that group of donors. If I shoot off on my own ridiculous and ill-conceived agenda, maybe I'm actually annoying b both groups. He, he's not um, strategic that way. He's, he's not pragmatic. He just, you know, whatever, it, it shoots out of his mouth and let's just go for it. And unfortunately, he has been surrounded, not just in this administration, but literally in his entire life, by people who are very, very happy to just suck up to him and please him and keep him happy because nobody wants to deal with kind of the crazy person he becomes when he doesn't get his own way. The Republicans are understanding that it's going to take work to recover from Trump. Don't kid yourselves. If you're thinking that the McConnells of the world are thrilled with Trump, yeah, not so much. Okay, they're tr they're thrilled with the, the puppet, the manip the ability to manipulate him. Um, they're they're kind of pleased with the fact that he really doesn't understand what's going on around him, so they can pretty much tell him anything, and he'll take it as sort of you know relative truth. Um, but they don't. They're aware of the damage he's doing. They're mindful of their reputations being destroyed. They're also worried about. Um, dirty little secrets coming to the surface and implicating them. So, it, you know, in their own ways, they're kind of carrying a very heavy burden trying to figure out how to make this situation with him work and be productive. And in some ways, they really are coming to the, the realization, certainly McConnell is, that the Republicans' days in power are numbered. They can talk a good talk, they can say whatever they want, but they're not moving ahead. They're decreasing, they're shrinking, and everyone around is becoming more agitated, more annoyed, more embarrassed um, by this administration and what goes on. So they're kind of aware of the fact that their days are numbered. And it is this, it, as if they sort of had, um, it was an either or kind of, situation that they felt they were in from the get-go when they realized how, how powerful Trump's support was it was like okay well either support him or be banished um and so for their own purposes they they chose to support him now I'm not giving them one hint not one little pinch of um sympathy because you know make your bed sleep in your bed but um in many, many ways, they, they really are, um, you know, trapped in the nightmare of their own creation. Um, and behind the scenes, there is a lot of um, how do we make this work? How do we try to write this and correct it? And he's, you know, personally and privately, they see him as incredibly flawed they recognize and understand sort of the personality deficits. And for right now, literally, they're trying to get as much stuff stacked in their favor as they possibly can. So, losing the Mercer's money and all of that family money and all of that wealth is quite a blow. You know, in some ways, it's a bit of a blow to Trump because it's a rejection for him. But for the Republicans who have had these long established um, reputations with these donors, who, um, you know, they do what the donors want and they are rewarded um, monetarily for doing that, um, they're worried because they're not sort of convinced that the Mercers, once they have abandoned will exactly rush back to them. I mean, it was a few months ago that, if I remember correctly, that the Mercer sent out kind of a warning shot because I do remember them announcing that, um, that sort of like if the Republicans didn't, didn't kind of pull Trump back in and rein him in, they would be supporting any, Repu any Democrat who um, they felt could take Trump out of office. Now, I'm not so convinced, in fact, I'm not convinced at all, that there are any actual Democrats who have taken them up on that offer, but certainly the portion of the threat where they were going to pull back is exactly, um, exactly 
what has happened. So it's not like this caught the Republicans off guard. It's not like they were shocked or surprised. They knew it was coming. They had been warned. They had been warned multiple times. This isn't working for us. You know, he's causing waves. He's drawing attention to things that we don't want attention drawn to. Some of his policies and rollbacks are incredibly helpful. And some of them are actually making trouble for us. Get him under control. Well, nobody can get him under control because everybody is so scared that, um, you know, Trump is going to um, insult them and badmouth them. And the Republican base is going to turn against them. And frankly, it's, it's, you know, it, it, it's not an inaccurate assessment of what is going on. So... The Republicans could not or would not accept the um, warnings of some of their bigger donors, particularly the Mercers. They, were, they felt unable to um, kind of do what they wanted to uh, accept their insight and guidance and, and make that work for them because they were so scared of being left out in of control, you know, left out of the um, the inner circle around Trump. Um, but don't kid yourself; the Republicans are very, very worried about the road that Trump is sort of leading them down. Now, not worried enough to actually grow, you know, some balls and um, stand up to the guy, but you know, worried. And there's Trump, you know, just sitting like a king in his castle, which is what he secretly and not so secretly wants to be. And he, he just doesn't care, right? I mean, he doesn't even want to be reelected as much as he just doesn't want his ego to take a hit. But he doesn't care. So if he crashes and smashes a few things along the road, well, so be it. It's, it's none of his concern. Um, and it's, you know, it's leaving the Republicans in a difficult situation the world is watching. The world is not impressed. The world is hoping for justice to come. And it will come. And they're going to be, you know, left out in the cold. So there was no temperance. There was no balance. And so the cycle and the pattern will come to an end. Because you simply cannot conduct yourself in the scummy, I'm sorry, I don't have a better word for it, way that they have been acting and expect that that is not going to go unnoticed. You know, for every um, sort of big donor um, that backs the Republicans, how many blue collar workers do you think support the president? It'd be interesting to know what those stats are. You know, what is it like? Um, a thousand people support Trump for every, you know, um, big name donator. So, well, um, my, my point is this, that he's antagonizing the very base that he is absolutely dependent on. And while the base not, may not all kind of, um, change their colors or, or change teams, um, it's also diminishing, you know, they're losing strength. And so this horrendous little cycle that you're in now and the, the patterns of it need to come to an end, as does, of course, the Trump presidency. And frankly, the Republican Party needs to be knocked back and um, diminished so that they understand what happens when you take control and abuse it to such a degree that it is so blatantly obvious, so cruel, so inhumane, and so completely selfish and self-centered based on your own goals and motivations. While Trump does not necessarily understand the truths of what is going on, because frankly, He's so delusional. He lives in this like alternative, alternate reality. The Republic, Republicans, especially, um, 
you know, the long established ones, the Lindsey Grahams, the McConnells, they clearly understand what's going on, but they have so much dirt in their own closet, they, they can't push back um, the way they might have or the way people would have expected them to. Ex they can't do it. They're too corrupted. They're, they are just so corrupt. They're so busy trying to protect and, and keep safe what they have that um, they're not going to go against Trump. It, it's really, really tragic. Change is coming, and you know what? It's coming really fast. I don't see the Mercer's money making any headway in the Democratic Party. Um, I just don't. They're not going to be accepted, and no Democrat is ever wants to be known that they are someone who took the Mercer's money to enhance their chances um, in an election. So I don't see them taking the Mercer's off on that sort of offer. And I see the ramifications, uh, you know, to the Republican Party um, starting to surface actually really quite quickly because, again, you have that disappointment, you have that abandonment, you have... Um, looking and evaluating at what you have lost, what um, has been destroyed or ruined because of your actions. And so, um, yeah, it's not going to be, it's not going to be good. You've got judgment coming down on them. You've got the Ten of Swords coming down. Um, <laughs> it's going to be a really big, fall from grace. Um, the Republicans are not going to go down quietly. They're not going to lose by a little. It's going to be big. Um, it's going to be humiliating the loss that is bestowed on them in the coming election. So keep your thoughts focused. Stay positive. Manifest that which that which you wish to happen and um it's gonna turn out okay but it's gonna take work i'm not i'm not gonna tell you that magically it's just gonna turn better there's a lot of work a lot of energy that needs to go into ensuring that the light um triumphs over those darker and lower and more negative energies so, thank you very, very much um, for viewing this channel and supporting this channel. Um, I'm really enjoying going through the comments, and I love it when you guys say, you know, hi from South Africa, and hi from South Africa, by the way, um, or to South Africa, um, you know, from Sweden, from Jamaica. It's just such a thrill for me um, to, to sort of realize that my voice is reaching a whole lot of people who seem to be wanting to hear my message. Um, so that's incredibly special. So thank you so much. And until next time, be well, take care, and we'll see you real soon. Bye.